I've been asked a few times about the equipment that I'm using for both my audio work and my, my video work as well on the channel and outside the channel now normally if I get asked a couple of times or a few times I'll make a note of it for making future videos so what's happened here is that I've out of necessity had to uh, perform a couple of quick updates on the, the the main PC that I'm using so I thought whilst I've got it in bits might be a good opportunity for me to uh, record some uh, some footage about it and address those things because obviously for a couple of people are asking the questions there's probably other people out there that are thinking the same but not asking the questions now <clears throat> word of warning up from if you're not into PCs and techie stuff and all the gubbins and the inside bits these videos I'm gonna do a few in a series to keep it as short as possible are gonna be pretty boring to you but if you are into that side of things then uh, you know it might be interesting just to know um, what I'm using and compare it to what you might be able to use if it's of any help to you as always just because I'm using it doesn't make it the best or make it the only ones there's loads of choices out there everyone's got the best way of doing it but just to put it out there the equipment that I'm using so I can complete the the whole circle of my gear not just the guitar and music gear but the recording and uh, PC the tech gear as well so uh, to start with I've had this this, this PC is the uh, the centerpiece of all my work so this is what I use for recording music audio for my own purposes for other projects that I'm doing and as more recently over the last 12 months or so since I've been doing this channel it's the the workhorse of the uh, creating the videos as well so it does a few different things I don't use it for gaming that's one thing I don't do but outside of what I've just described I also do you know your basic office type work on it and emails and internet browsing things what you normally use a computer for I'm a bit of a dinosaur so I, I don't actually I do have a tablet but I've not really got into using it that much yet so I'm still very PC uh, based old school now speaking of old school this PC I don't know exactly when I bought it but it must be 10 years old and the core of it is still the same as it was then so it's not going to be anywhere near as fast as the uh, the ones that you could buy today uh, prices always come down in terms of PC computer technology so the the specification of the stuff that I've got now most of it is probably dirt cheap at the moment why have I still got it after 10 years well because number one it does what I want it to do so I don't need to upgrade it I don't need to buy the newest and best thing just because it's out there and secondly and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit more detail is because when I uh, when I put it together I, I built this myself I didn't buy it off the shelf I made some what I think are sensible decisions that made sure that I was future proofed and could upgrade it at times like this when I've needed to uh, and those have proved now to be quite sensible decisions that I made so what have I got going on here I'm going to split this into uh, a few videos like I say on this first one I'm just going to talk about the basics uh, of what's in the box for the PC so this is why it might be a bit boring for people who aren't into PCs so there's there's four things noteworthy that go into a computer to make it live and I call that like the beating heart of the computer the first thing is your, your CPU now as I say Bear in mind, this is some time ago when I when I bought this stuff. I uh, the CPU is an Intel Core i7. If that means anything to anybody, if you if you Google it, you'll probably find those cheapest chips nowadays. But it's it's been great to me. It's 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 been as powerful as I've ever ever needed. It's never been lacking in power. Maybe if you're a person that plays games and needs super high resolution and frame rates, it may not be good enough for you. But for music it's been absolutely fine for me so far the video is still a bit new to me so we'll see how it pairs up with that but for music editing and audio production that's been absolutely fine now my thought process because I've built a few PCs in the past is I choose my, my, my CPU my processor that's going to be the first thing that I choose because that's the basically the engine how much power you've got in the PC now if money was no object you could go on a uh, a website um, Amazon or loads of other exists have a look Google what's the most powerful PC I can get and if you're you know, a lottery winner you probably buy the most powerful one out there my train of thought is have a look at that list which is the most powerful ones and then go a little bit further down 
and just see how much cheaper the ones are that are maybe the fifth or tenth most powerful one you can get and if you look at the little graphs it'll show you there's not actually a massive amount of difference but the difference in price is quite a bit so this was probably about between 30 to 50 percent cheaper than the best one if i'd have bought the best one back in the day so i thought for that amount of extra little bit of performance it wasn't worth spending the extra money so now i've got my processor my cpu i need somewhere for it to live and that's your main circuit in your computer, what's called your motherboard. Now, I did a little bit of research at the time, I remember very well, and one of the things that you'll notice is a theme on the components that I've bought, is I've, I've tried to stick with a little bit of a, a higher quality approach, even if it meant spending a little bit more, and I'm contradicting myself because I've just saved money on my processor, but on some items it's worth spending a little bit more just so that I'm future proofed. Now with the motherboard, um, what I did was I read some reviews. A lot of it probably won't make sense if you're not into it, but um, I ended up buying a, a motherboard by a company called AS Rock. It was very well reviewed and recommended at the time, not only because it works very well with that processor and it makes a good system. A lot of people were selling the two combined as a, a bare bones starter for people who want to make their own system, but also, because it had a lot of expandability on it and things that I might want to use in future. It had loads and loads of USB ports, both uh, on, the, on the back where they normally are and on breakout cables so I can put them on the front of the case or wherever I want them. So I've got loads of chance and opportunity to plug extra things in, particularly my cameras, my audio equipment, my phone, whatever else, I can plug that into the computer without running out of ports on it. Another thing it had, and I didn't think I'd ever need it at the time, was um, an adapter slot for a, what I would call a gamer's graphics card or a GPU. Now, at the time I didn't want to put one of those in my PC, I don't play games, and from my experience, because they're so powerful, they tend to make a lot of noise, so I avoided that, and for, well, up until, up until recent months, I've always just relied on the basic graphics that were built into that, uh, that motherboard that I bought because I'm not playing games it made no difference to me um, so that worked just fine things have changed when I've got into video editing but I'll discuss that in another video but I was lucky that I had that slot because now I've needed to use it as I will talk about in the future going on from there we need some memory so that's the not, not the speed the processor's speed but the memory is your storage capacity um, of, your, of your computer when you're working on things. If you don't have enough memory, it'll make your computer slow. So you need to have enough, um, bearing in mind the task that you're doing. If you're only writing letters and browsing the internet, you don't need very much. Um, step it up a little bit. With the audio side, I, I tried to get a decent amount. Um, I went with 16 gigabytes of memory, whether that means anything to anybody. This particular board in the computer, the motherboard, it will support 32 gigabytes so if I want to in the future I can add more memory to it again that expandability has been really uh, key in my decision making process I've never felt the need to because I've had enough memory um, for all my needs I've never found myself running out of the memory and in, in terms of what I've done over the past 10 years maybe that'll change now with doing some more intensive video editing um, but there is a little trick that you can do to find out how much memory you're using and how much processor you're using um, on a computer, certainly on a Windows computer. I'm using Windows 10. I'll talk about software in another video, but there's a little um, there's a little app in Windows called Task Manager, and if you press the keys on your keyboard, Control, Shift, and Escape at the same time, it'll bring up this little app called Task Manager. And on the top, you've got some tabs. I think the second one is labeled Performance. If you click on that, It'll give you some little graphs that show you how hard your process is working and how hard your memory is working. So if you at times you feel like your computer is running slow and you don't know why, if you have a quick look at that, it might give you an indication. If, you, if your memory chart is way up at the top, then it might be an indication that you need more memory in the computer. Little tip for you there. Finally, in terms of the you know the basic heartbeat of the computer, the last thing to talk about on this uh, video is going to be the hard drives. Now that's your storage space, so if you're a normal user, 
just typing up your, your documents and your letters, you'll barely use any room at all. If you're a <clears throat> step up from that, you know, family user, you've got all your pictures off your camera from your holidays and all that sort of thing, you'll need a bit more space. Step up from that, I was doing a bit of audio editing, those files can be quite big and uh, take up even more storage space, so the needs and requirements go up and up and up. In the context of what I'm doing now with these upgrades, the reason that I'm doing this now is that I've run out of hard drive storage space, I've had to upgrade my storage in the computer to be able to cope with the size of the video files. Video files are absolutely massive and now that I'm hoping, not on this video, but in future to have maybe a, a multi-camera um, video or, or videos, that's going to take up automatically double the, the size that I need. So I was aware that I needed a lot more storage in the hard drive department. When I started off, I think I had something like, I put two hard drives in it. Um, the reason for that is it's, it was best practice to have your operating system, which in my case is Windows, and your programs that you use, your applications, on one drive, and then have a, another drive for your data. That was always considered minimal best practice in terms of managing your storage. So I did, uh, I think, two times 500 gigabyte hard drives, if my memory serves me correct. That's how I started off with this setup. I have gradually upgraded the hard drives a couple of times over the years, but other than that, nothing else has been touched. The processors are the same, the CPU, the motherboard is the same, and the, uh, the memory in there is the same. I've got 16 gig of memory, and I've not yet felt the need to uh, to upgrade that. So those are the, the key essentials of the PC, the heart of it, as I say. In my next video, I'm gonna have a look at the the other extras that we need to actually turn it from a, a chipboard on your desk to a PC that actually works. So stay tuned for that video.